All right. Well, uh, project number one is this gearbox here. This uh, is the gearbox I mentioned in my overview of projects uh, that is gonna be mounted on the tongue. It will have on the interior, it will hold the, uh, the house battery, charging cables will come in, power out will, uh, will go out of it, and the LED uh, power display will also uh, come, come outside of this as well. So, um, super cool box, as you can see, it is uh, also by 23-0, the same uh, Australian Overland company that, um, that I got my um, that I got my rooftop tent and annex and shower from. Um, it's pretty cool. It's set up with a mole system for the uh, the ceiling, which um, they have not finalized yet, but I will be getting that very soon. So as you can see, um, what I did here is there's uh, there is some holes to uh, bring power cables in, power cables out and bolts to the front wall of the trailer. And then on the bottom, there is uh, mounting holes for the battery box and bolts to mount it to the tongue of the trailer. So this is where it got super fun, was um, building out the mounting system for the gearbox. So this piece that we're looking at right here is our base plate. So um, it's got the six holes that uh, go out and mount to the trailer. One, two, three, four, five, and six. The rest of these smaller ones are actually mounting holes for our new battery box. So let me make sure I do this right. This is the front. This side is the front. So battery box will mount on on that this plate goes on the floor of the gearbox and creates a super secure and um, stable holding plate for the gearbox then this piece this piece mounts on the back so it will go up vertically along the back these six small holes are bolt holes to bolt through the back and um, bolted to the front of the trailer. And then the two large holes are power in from the charging, um, from the charging station on the truck and power out to the inverter and the, uh, the trigger switch. So um, ultimately, well actually let me show you this last piece here too. So what I did find out uh, as I was looking at all of this is that when you open a box like this, the back of the lid hangs over the back of the box. So there needs to be space between the back of the box and the area that you're mounting it to. But I didn't want to only mount this to the floor or the, the base of the tongue. And um, so I kind of had to think about how I wanted to ultimately manage it. And ultimately what I decided to do was create these um, these spacer brackets. So this is the bottom one and on the bottom it has the charging cables to come up. They make a 90 degree turn and they go into the back of the box. And then this is the upper one which will have power going out. Both of these have the same six or same three holes each. For bolts to go through so these are on the outside of the box so this is on the inside of the box then it mounts to the back of the box through these and into the front wall of the trailer so ultimately we'll have a nice secure mounting to the front wall of the trailer and the floor of the trailer so where uh definitely got sticky in a <laughs> also a little bit expensive is we ultimately had to drill holes with these step downs these were what we used for the large holes cobalt um, tipped um, step down drills and then 
um, these cobalt drill bits is what we used ultimately to drill a lot of the holes. So um, if anything else, I can tell you, I definitely learned a lot about metal fabrication, going slow, working with oil, keeping your bits cool. Um, all was a huge part of being able to do these. Um, lastly, we did end up uh, filing down the edges so that we had nice smooth edges and corners so that nothing got caught or anybody's hand got cut while uh, trying to grab something out of the box. And then if you look close, you can kind of see where we've sanded down our sheet metal. We uh, gave it a nice clean finish. Then we hit it with some mineral spirits and gave it uh, gave it a good clean um, clean surface. Going to be priming with a um, with a flat protective enamel, um, good old fashioned rust oleum. And then rust oleum actually has this super cool truck bed coating that I'm going to put on top of the uh, first layer, and uh, that will give it a good uh, a good. Um, traction as well as for the uh, exterior pieces they'll actually be able to sort of mount the same texture that the truck or I'm sorry that the trailer um, trailer paint has so anyways that's uh, that's kind of my gearbox project it's uh, I gonna tell you the, the the metal fabrication has been a took a lot longer than I thought it would but uh, it came out came out pretty good and I'm pretty happy with it and I think it's going to ultimately survive a nuclear bomb if uh, if anything ever hits it but this thing is going to be riding on some rough roads so I wanted to make sure that we were good um, love this box though good um, good heavy gasket seal so it's waterproof dustproof everything inside here is going to be totally protected and I'll be able to have recovery gear things that you just need immediately when you get to the campground leveling um, leveling plates, um, tools, lights, things of that nature, just so that it's all easily accessible. So anyways, that is my gearbox project. And what I'll do is I'll give you uh, a real quick video of it when I get it wrapped up and mounted. Hey, so I am going to open up I'm gonna open up my electrical wall here. There's kind of a false wall here that the inverter and the wireless switch are mounted to. Um, as I work on uh, putting the, um, the equipment box on the tongue that will have some electrical uh, connections uh, through there, and I'm gonna be bolting actually onto the front wall as well to uh, secure the uh, equipment box. I need to see what's behind here and get access to it. So I uh, figured I'd open it up on video and we check it out and forever memorize this moment. All right, so I have no idea what to expect when I uh, open this up. I don't even know if I'm gonna need a second set of hands to help me manage this. So we're gonna floor there. There. Okay. Well, let's take a look. pretty simple um, we've just got the red and black wire here in this one those are just my uh, my battery cables straight to the inverter and then on the other side is actually something I'm still gonna have to get to know a little bit more about myself which is this Trigger for wireless. This is the wireless connection. Wireless switch. That's the 
two connections there. We got one connection to the rock lights, the cooking lights, the interior lights. And we've got one going over to the, um, the, oh, oh the, um, cigarette switch, cigarette lighter for the, for where the previous owner had his, um, his 12 volt refrigerator. So I will be connecting two more into those for some other lights that I'm going to be putting onto the system. And yeah, that's all of the, that's the lights coming up from the ground there. And this is the lights going out to the interior and the cooking area. So cool. That gives me a good safe spot to be able to drill. And I know how much I'm working with here on these battery cables too. Um, hopefully I've got enough to get in and wire to where I'm going. That should be pretty close, but we'll, uh, we'll play that by ear. So anyways, um, I've got a cover on it. No, I've been trying to kind of keep it dry and clean. That's, uh, That is our electrical wall. Bye. All right, quick little uh, update here, kind of mid front uh, equipment box project. So um, was able to get all of my steel finished, uh, went ahead and we've got grommets in all of our holes, all of our bolt holes are pre-drilled, everything's been painted and ready to go. I also decided to go with a uh, an extra grommet actually just glued to the outside. This is actually the side that will uh, be making contact with the front wall of the trailer. Um, so I wanted to give myself, I believe I need a little teeny bit of space. I figured we can crank down on this and give it a little bit of cushion between the trailer and this maybe avoid some scratching and, and some vibrations and noise on it ultimately. The other side um, is gonna actually just make direct contact with the uh, with the box, which is plastic or fiberglass, and I'm, I'm not too worried about that piece. So um, also base plate, all pre-drilled. You see these small bolts here are actually for the battery box. We've got all of those pre-drilled, bolted. We even actually painted the battery box with the um, truck bed liner paint. We've got a grommet at the top of the battery box. Uh, out of that grommet will come the solar charging access port here. Uh, this is what the solar panel uh, plugs into and charges the uh, charge the battery. So uh, we'll be able to run that either from the driver's side through the drain port of the box, or I uh, put another grommet here that will be uh, for an external access of the uh, of the charging cable. This hole is for our LED display for our. Um, battery voltage or charge amount. Uh, so I'm actually going to be putting another small hole here and putting a switch so I can turn that, um, that LED display on or off and eliminate drain when we're not using it. And then actually on this side, the driver's side, I'm actually going to be putting a switch and a cigarette lighter, um, 12 volt access so that we can plug our water pump water heater into that, uh, and keep it off of the switch access interior of the uh, trailer and use that switch for for another set of lighting that you'll see later um inside of the box also has all the holes drilled grommets in ready to go so uh and then this is the uh the back wall panel no grommets in all right uh we are getting close to being wrapped up on the equipment box project but just wanted to throw in kind of a uh, a little midway update here so um i have just about got everything wrapped up internally on the box so um, i've now got the plates mounted inside i've got my battery box mounted inside the um are mounted to the plate. I've got a light um, 
that is going to be hardwired into the battery. And by hardwired, I, I basically mean not running through the inverter or not running through uh, the trigger switch, the wireless control switch. These will be hardwired into the um, into the battery. I did uh, put a disconnect, a power disconnect uh, switch here, which gives you the which will give me the ability of turning the power on or off. Uh, when uh, when not in use, um, I've got my voltmeter, a switch for the voltmeter, grommet pass through for the solar charging. Speaking of solar charging, I've got my solar charging um, control box here, which will actually access into the battery through the grommet here at the top and. Um, I did end up putting grommets in on all of the uh, screw ports so that those will seal up. And then this side has the uh, 12 volt um, cigarette lighter access and a switch for that. So um, again, those will be hardwired in and will run through this switch. The inverter will run through this switch as will the trigger switch wireless control switch box. The only thing uh, that won't go through this switch are the charging systems, which uh, speaking of charging systems, I mentioned that I'll have solar, but also wanted to show you what I've got on the truck. I basically put a inline driving charging system on. So this guy here and this guy here run down underneath the truck to a quick disconnect here, which runs to a quick disconnect here at the end of the trailer tongue, which runs to a quick disconnect here because the trailer tongue does pivot so I can actually decrease the amount of space I need when parking this. So this gives me the ability of disconnecting it from this line, which actually runs up below and into the box. So this will connect into the battery um, as a charging system. These are the spacers that you saw earlier, and this is the power out to the uh, inverter and trigger switch that are in there. They're kind of hung there because I'm getting ready to uh, to try and start installing the box on the tongue. So getting close to having this project wrapped up, that's the update and I'll show you some shots of everything once we get it all connected. Hey guys, again. oh, by the way, um, new drinking game. Every time you watch a YouTube video and somebody says, hey guys, you gotta take a shot. All right, so uh, just the last little clip of our first project, which was our equipment uh, box for the tongue of the trailer. So again, this was our 23-0, liter box. Uh, awesome box, water sealed, waterproof. If this thing is super sweet, but the whole project was about being able to mount it in a very sturdy way to the tongue of our uh, trailer and have it house the battery, some of the electrical equipment, and then. Um, also some additional gear for it. So as you can see, we've got it mounted on. If you remember, if you want to come over here, Conley, and show right behind the, um, yep, we're just going to show those bars right there. You're good. Um, if you remember, the issue was when you open, when I realized I opened up the box, it needed that space there to be able to, uh, to accommodate the lid so i had to build out those spacers earlier in the video you saw the steel i used for those so we've got those in now if you want to come over here Conley, we've got them uh each of those spacers is bolted through three times on the back we have our back steel plate we have our bottom steel plate we've got our battery box everything is bolted through and this thing is super tight one of the things that I did here is I put a hot switch on off for my battery so I can shut the battery completely off and not have it drain any electricity while not in use. So the key goes in, we turn that on, we've got juice, key turns off, we don't have any juice. So we've got that. What I did is I hardwired or hotwired this light 
I hot wired a 12 volt cigarette lighter switch on this side with a switch on it. And I hot wired a voltmeter switch on this side. This is a port here for the solar to be able to have the solar cable come out to the solar panels and charge our battery. So when I say hot wired, what I mean by that is, is they, they are wired directly to the battery. Everything else on the trailer will be uh, hot wired or actually trigger wired off of our trigger switch. So uh, what I'll do here in a minute is I'll show you how that, that again functions for the rest of the lights. Um, this here is our solar panel control um, box. Make sure that we don't overcharge or have any spikes in our, um, in our charging system. So um, that is what's inside the box. Now coming to feed the box is our inline or active charging system. So what this does is this connects into the truck. We've got a cable that comes down here. And what I've done, if you see down here, is I've got two quick disconnects here to connect this. And the reason that I put this in is that the trailer, if you look here, has two hitch pins. And you could take one of these hitch pins out and slide the tongue of it around and give yourself um, a lot less storage requirement for it. So when we do that, we'd have to be able to quick disconnect that. So our quick disconnect goes to another quick disconnect, which if you follow me over here, Conley, comes into a quick disconnect on the back of the truck. And that runs underneath the truck. Boom. I figured coming out at nighttime might be a little bit better uh, effect and show you some of the lights on the trailer. So uh, what I end up doing first is flipping my power switch on. Then I've got access to lights in my power box. I have access to, if you swing over here, you can see that that little blue light turns on now and you can uh, see that we've got juice here in my cigarette lighter and then if we go over to this side you'll see my voltmeter with when i turn my switch on here voltmeter powers up and it's showing my voltage availability in my battery and then when we hit the rock lights, you see we've got lights underneath the trailer that create kind of an ambiance light to the overall campsite. And then if you swing around back here, you've got our cooking area and then lights inside the, uh, inside the trailer. And then off they go, on they go, and then we'll have three other three other power switches or three other power channels on the on the same Wi-Fi switch. So that is our gearbox. If uh, take one more look, you can basically see how we've got it all wrapped up. Bow put on it, lockable, sealable ready to go. Time for the next project.